All right, here we are at lecture example 11.2.1, and this is calculating a partial derivative from the actual definition of a partial uh, derivative, the limit definition that is. And so this assumes that you're familiar with the limit definition of a derivative in general and the brand new to you probably limit definition of a partial derivative. So let's go ahead and tackle the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y when given the function, the multivariate function, f of x, y is equal to x squared minus 3x, y cubed. All right, so writing down the limit definition. You can possibly see here why I choose to make a speedy computation video out of this. It's because there's just a lot of handiwork here. All right, plugging in x plus h in for x, and y in for y. Let's go ahead and compute this out. All right, and we see that the partial of f with respect to x is 2x minus 3y cubed. That's not too bad. That was not too bad at all. So let's go ahead and figure out what the partial of f is with respect to to y. And generally speaking, when we do that, we change the uh, dummy variable here from an h to a k. But you can keep it as h if you want to. I personally just like to write it as k. Almost made a little mistake there, but luckily I avoided it. And now canceling like terms there. And we finally arrive at the partial of f with respect to y. Notice that these partials, these partial derivatives, are not the same. Also, uh, we're not talking about it in Math 420, but just something to let you know right now that uh, you can take higher order partial derivatives, that is the partial of a function with respect to x and then with respect to x, that is a second partial derivative, sort of like uh, y double prime in a way, but you'd have the, I should probably write this down, you'd have the partial of f squared with respect to x squared, let's say. Most people wouldn't write it like that. In fact, most people would probably write it like this, but you could write it as partial of x squared. Uh, you could also have two derivatives of f, but the first partial with respect to x and the second partial with respect to y. And then same thing, two partials of f with respect to y and then with respect to, oops, to x. Note here, uh, that, and again, this is not the purview of Math 420, but it is not always the case that these two are equal. It's not always the case that they are equal. So that's just a heads up. Uh, not important for us, but important for partial differential equations and then also Calc 3. Otherwise, what I want to draw your attention to here is probably something I mentioned in class already, but I'm just going to go ahead and state it here. When we took the partial of f with respect to x, we basically held y as a constant. And so when you take the derivative of this with respect to x, we're used to that being just a 2x. If you were to pretend as though y is a constant and x is our variable, then negative three times a constant times x, its derivative with respect to x is just negative three times that constant. Remember y being constant when you're taking the partial with respect to x. And notice that's exactly what we have down below. Also, had you taken the partial of f with respect to y, you would hold x as constant and y as the variable. And again, taking the partial of f with respect to y, x being constant, the derivative of the constant is zero. And then we have three times a constant times our y value to the third power. Uh, so taking that derivative, you get a negative three times three or negative nine x y squared. And if you take a look down below, that's exactly what we got. So very fast way to compute it using our old school differentiation methods. But you still have to kind of know the limit definition of the derivative for more theoretical applications.